Hello. In a previous video, we have seen how to summarize data with the mean and find a confidence interval for the mean. We have also seen that we need to be careful and the confidence interval for the mean may not always be very robust. Today, we will see an alternative method, the confidence interval for the median, which does not have any of these problems. So, let's take as example the same values we had from the previous video on the confidence interval for the mean. So, we have measured the results of 10 experiments and obtained the values of the performance of our internet access in megabits per second given here. They all are around 8 megabit per second. To summarize the data, instead of computing the mean, we can compute the median. What is the median? To understand what it is, we first start by ordering the 10 values we have in increasing order. So we have 10 values and the middle is here. There are 5 values that are less than or equal to 792 and 5 values that are larger than or equal to 808. So here we have, we will say that the interval 792 808 is the median interval and we can say that the median is the middle of this which is in this case exactly 8. The important thing about the median is that there are as many values below it as there are above. The median is an alternative way to summarize the data. Here it gives the value 8. We previously had used the mean which gave a value of 7.982. They are not exactly the same, but they are in the same ballpark, and we expect both of them to summarize the central value of the data. Like for the mean, we would like to quantify the uncertainty about the median and find a confidence interval for it. Like for the mean, we imagine that the data is produced by a simulator that randomly draws 10 values from some distribution f. This distribution has a median mu. What is the median of a distribution? It is a number such that 50% of the mass of the distribution is below and 50% is above. In other words, with probability 50%, we will be below mu and with probability 50%, we will be above mu. For most theoretical distributions, mu is a unique number, not an interval like we found previously. So our problem is to find something that we can say about mu without knowing mu nor the distribution f, but having seen the 10 outputs of the simulator. The answer is more elaborate than for the mean, but as we will see, it's worth the complication. To find the answer, we need to have access to the table of the binomial distribution. This can be found, for example, in books like perfeval.upfl.ch that shows a table like this one. This table says that if you are looking for a confidence interval for the median at level 95%, you have to first find the number of samples, the number of data points, for us it is 10. And then this table gives you two values, 2 and 9, which are the values of indices that you should use in the sorted lists of your experimental values. In our case, the second value is 776, the ninth value is 832. Well, the theory says that this is my confidence interval for the median. In other words, I can be 95% sure that the true median mu of the unknown simulator is in this interval. We have seen how to compute the confidence interval for the median when n is small, using the table. If n is larger than some value, 71, instead of going to a table, we can use a closed form formula if we want to be sure with probability 95%, we compute J and K, 
which are the integer approximations of the formulas given here. J is obtained by rounding to the nearest integer below and k to the nearest integer above. For example, for n equal 100, we find j equal 40 and k equal 61. Of course, you recognize in those formulas magical statistical number 0980, which are related to the confidence level. If we want to be sure with probability 95%, those are the values we will obtain. So if we had 100 values and not 10, a confidence interval for the median would be obtained by the 40th value, x sub parenthesis 40, and the 61st value, x61. This seems a bit magical. Where does this formula come from? Where does the table com come from? Well, they are related to coin flipping. Assume you flip a coin, an unbiased coin, a fair coin, 10 times. As many times in general as we have data points. And count how many times you win. In average, you expect to win 5 times if the coin is fair, but the truth is it will be random and the number of times you win may be anything between 0 and 10. Very unlikely that you win 0 times or 10 times, but not impossible. And we would like to find an interval that says how many times we are going to win with 95% probability. This can be computed from what is known as the binomial distribution. For example, if n equals 10, we flip a coin 10 times, we are 95% sure that we will win between 2 and 8 times. If we flip the same coin 100 times, we can say that with at least 95% probability, we will win between 40 to 60 times. Now, how is this related to the median? Let's introduce a coin flipping game. The simulator is playing 10 values. Let me call them x1, x2, x10. For each of them, I say that I win if it is less than or equal to the median. Otherwise, I lose. So there will be 10 outcomes. Because the median is precisely such that with 50% probability we are below, it's a fair coin. What does it mean for me if I win two times? It means that two of the values output by the simulator were less than the median, and the eight other values were more than the median. So two values are below mu, and eight values are above mu. Now, if I write x with a parenthesis in the subscript 2 to mean the second value out of the 10. Remember, I had sorted the 10 values in increasing order. So the second one in this order must be less than the median, and the third one must be above. This is exactly what it means, that two values are below. Similarly, if I win three times, it means that the third value in increasing order is less than the median, but the fourth is above, etc. If I win eight times, it means the eighth is below mu and the ninth is above. Now, remember that from the binomial distribution, we know that we can be 90% sure that I will win between two to eight times. That means I can be 95% sure that the median is in one of those seven cases that I mentioned. So it means that mu must be between x sub 2, the second value in increasing order, and the ninth value in increasing order, which means that a confidence interval for the median is between x2 and x9. Notice that here I'm saying that mu is larger than or equal x2, but less strictly than x9. In practice, if the unknown distribution of the simulator has a density, we can ignore such subtleties. Remember, we saw that the confidence interval for the mean is not very robust, and we claim that the confidence interval for the median is. Let's illustrate this on this example. Let's assume again that for some reason one of the values that we have measured is completely wrong, much too large is, for example, 792 instead of 7.92. 
Let's compute a confidence interval for the median in this case. We need to sort the values in increasing order. Our theory says that the confidence interval for the median is obtained by looking at the second and the ninth. So we find, which is a bit different, but not very different from the previous one. This formula was able to eliminate one outlier without doing anything specific about it. Well, we can say in general that the confidence interval for the median does not require any specific assumption other than the assumptions that I made about the simulator that something is drawing the values independently at random from one given distribution. In practice, that means that the output of my experiment is done using steady conditions and that any potential hidden factors are properly randomized. It does not depend on the central limit theorem or an n being large or the distribution to have any finite variance. Admittedly, it's a bit more complicated to compute than for the mean, but with a computer it's no problem. You have access to the binomial distribution in Excel or MATLAB or lots of other packages. You need to sort the data, which has complexity n log n or less if you use smart software. So, in summary, use the median instead of the mean.